Nugget Cast, Big Data now has a best friend. A way to get data results quickly and efficiently, and that's through Google's BigQuery. Welcome, Camp Conquerors. Today we're going to have an apple bobbing competition. Who's ready to bring it? Anthony's representing the Rapscallions and his challenge today, are you ready for this? I'm ready. <laughs> is going to be to get one red apple out of the bucket. Yeah, nice job. Okay, your challenge is to find the red apple and only the red apple in this bucket. Ready? Uh, yeah. Heck yeah. Welcome to Nugget Cast. Once again, coming to you from Camp Conquer, your ultimate IT summer camp. I'm your host, Steve Barth, and today we're exploring the interpretation of big data. Now, one of the latest things in IT is the use of big data, but the challenge is finding the exact information you need from giant amounts of information. There are resources that can help, such as Hadoop, but data is most useful when it can be interpreted quickly. Therefore, tools such as Google's BigQuery are developed to help you get the most out of this information in the fastest amount of time. So what is Google BigQuery? Why is it so exciting and how do you get started? Today, let's chat with trainer Garth Schulte to find out what is so amazing about Google BigQuery. Garth Schulte, welcome to NuggetCast, or in this case, Camp Conquer. It's August, it's still summertime, we are still at Camp Conquer. How's it going? Good, good, Steve. Thanks. How are you? Good. So, today we've got some big things to talk about, specifically Google's BigQuery. So, tell me, in a nutshell, what is Google BigQuery? It's a big thing indeed. <laughs> so, querying big data is a lot like bobbing for apples. If you're looking for something specific in all that data and all those apples, it could take a really long time. But BigQuery allows you to find that single apple really fast. BigQuery is a way for us to get real-time answers from big data. Uh, one of the big problems right now uh, in, in any big data pipeline is getting answers fast. It's difficult, and, and if you if you have, say, a new infrastructure set up, even then it's, it's difficult because there aren't technologies out there for close to real-time ad hoc analysis. Uh, we've got techs out there, but they're all built on top of MapReduce, and it makes it difficult and timely to get the data. So, BigQuery is really just an ad hoc data analysis technology for a big data pipeline. Real-time insights into your big data. So where exactly does BigQuery fit into a big data pipeline then? Uh, sure, it, it actually fits uh, towards the end of the pipeline. So generally in, inside of a big data pipeline, you go through the ingestion phase and that's where you get the data out of your source systems or, or out of say log files or say you've got data in Google Analytics and, and you want to get that data out. Uh, you first ingest it and then you may need to transform it. And that's where Hadoop comes into play in MapReduce. So MapReduce is, is kind of in the, in, in the batch processing side where you take billions of rows and aggregate them down to say trillions or millions of rows. Uh, from there, we load it into BigQuery. So BigQuery is where you get your data down to say thousands or hundreds of thousands of rows where we can then interact with it uh, through front ends or digital dashboards or uh, you know, our own custom reports. So where does BigQuery fit then in the whole Google Cloud platform? Ah, the Google Cloud platform. It's, it's all about data in the Google Cloud platform, and this is what's really neat. So we've got all these, these products that sit on top of Google's infrastructure that utilize Google's underlying technologies, things like Bigtable and the Google File System, and, and the list goes on and on there. So in the Google Cloud platform, we have things like Compute Engine, which is block storage, right? Persistent disks are block storage. You have cloud storage, which is known as blob storage. 
uh, where we can, it's essentially think of like a, as the file system for the Google Cloud Platform. We've got the Cloud Data Store, which is a NoSQL, non-relational style database where, where uh, programmers can put their objects. And then you have Cloud SQL, which is the relational world, which a lot of people are useful uh, used to. And then finally, a BigQuery, which is really new SQL or near SQL that takes the best of, of, of all those worlds and brings them into the world of big data. I guess with all that said, what is so great about BigQuery? Oh, BigQuery rocks. <laughs> uh, some of the, just to name a few of them here, SQLite queries. So there's really no easy way to pull data out of a, a big data pipeline without being a programmer. Now, uh, BigQuery allows us to, to do what everyone's familiar with. We can write questions in a familiar manner. It's easy to use, easy to adopt, and we can get answers quickly. Uh, another one is auto-optimization. In the world of, of, of relational databases, we're used to indexing and maintaining those indexes. Well, BigQuery does it all for us. There is no indexes. It automatically optimizes our data when we put it in there. We don't have to worry about that. We can just load it and start querying it. Uh, there's no size limitations. Another big one, which is kind of mind boggling at first. I mean, who, who offers a service where there's no size limit? None. You can put terabytes and terabytes uh, with no problem. Requires no hardware. And that's really a big one. We're sitting on top of Google's infrastructure. So we don't, we don't need any hardware at all. Again, just load it up and start start interacting with it. Uh, BigQuery supports simple schemas. It's a, again, a familiar infrastructure or familiar objects. It's just tables. So we can, we can put our data inside of a simple table, but it also supports complex schemas. So if we have a complex uh, design, we can easily just bring it right into BigQuery because it supports things like nested and repeated fields. Uh, and one more here, it's just, Overall, it's just easy. Easy to build, easy to develop, easy to manage, easy to do everything. And we've got nice interfaces to work with. We've got a web UI to work with. We've got a command line utility to work with. And we've got RESTful interfaces with client libraries built on top of them that make, that'll make it for easy, make it easy, I should say, for programmers uh, to ingest into their applications. Okay, so now to the big question that a lot of people might be thinking. How much does this cost and how in the world do you get started? Ah. Great question. So pricing is uh, kind of mind-boggling because it's really cheap to use BigQuery. You're only gonna get charged for two things. You get charged for storage, which is two and a half cents a gigabyte. <laughs> Pretty reasonable, right? Yeah. And then you get charged for query, which is five dollars a terabyte. Pretty good. And you get a lot of free stuff. Loading is free. Reading, copying, exporting, all free. Getting started is also very simple. Sign up for a Google account if you don't already have one. Then head over to cloud.google.com. Sign in. Create a project, configure billing, choose your tool, whether it's the web UI, command line, utility, or, uh, or the API that you want to hit programmatically, and you're done. Now you can load up your data, query, and build a web. So can you give us any real world examples just to help kind of solidify in our minds what BigQuery can do? Uh, I've got a great use case for you, uh, and this is actually a one on Google's site. Safari Books Online. It's a great place where you can just go get a subscription to, to, to things like IT books and, and start reading, right? Well, back in the uh, uh, few years ago, they have all of this data from their CDN and their web logs. They've got billions of records. And they used a MySQL database, and obviously getting real-time answers is, just isn't going to happen in a relational database. It could take an hour before you get the answers. So they looked for solutions. They looked at Hadoop, but they said, oh, Hadoop's going to require a lot of people and a lot of money, and, and we're just not that big to support that. So they waited. One of their engineers eventually saw a, a video on YouTube, a Google I.O. video, explaining BigQuery, and they said, wow, this, this kind of fits our needs. And so they loaded all their data into BigQuery from, from all that usage data, uh, and now they can get answers across all their devices in real time. So they built a nice digital dashboard where they can see their top users. Uh, they can do things like get leads that come to them. So they mash up their their uh, user usage data with their account data based on IP address, and now they can tell what their users are looking at, and so the leads come to them. They don't have to go to their leads. And then on top of that, they use the web UI just for interactive analysis to answer specific business questions. So there's that's one of many great use cases. But that's the, kind of the beauty of, of BigQuery is you can use it for all those things. You can use it to get to analyze trends. You can use it to answer specific questions. You can build dashboards on top of it. You can do it for lead generation. You can do it for everything, really. They're, they're, the sky's the limit when it comes to what you can pull out of your big data. Okay, so as we wrap up, final thoughts on BigQuery. What should people be taking away from this podcast? Sure. Well, you know, Google is, uh, they're the masters of big data. They started the whole big data revolution, and they're always five 
plus years ahead of everybody else. Well, they did this with BigQuery because there's nothing in the big data world. Uh, well, there is. There, there's Storm and Spark and Impala, but all those require Hadoop infrastructure. So there's nothing analysis as a service wise out there that, that, that allows anybody, you, me, us mere mortals out there to just load up our big data and start analyzing it and pay for what we use. So BigQuery is going to be a big deal, I think, here in the future because there's nothing like it. It's quick, it's easy to work with, anybody can get on board and it's cost effective. And what's the starting point? Where do people start if they want to look for more information? Uh, us. <laughs> <laughs> BigQuery course, obviously. But uh, also, uh, Google's documentation is great. They've, they've got some very simple examples that you can run through to get you up to speed really quick and, and get familiar with, with all the components in the process for integrating it into your big data pipeline. That's another beautiful thing that I want to mention is it's great for existing pipelines. So if you already have a Hadoop infrastructure set up, you can save a lot of money by moving the end of your pipeline into BigQuery. And if you're brand new, I mean, it's really a no brainer to uh, use BigQuery for your real time analysis. And that's Google BigQuery. So let's wrap it up for this month. We have past episodes of the show on YouTube, on iTunes, and the newly redesigned CBT Nuggets blog. And remember to contact us with ideas or topics you'd like to see us cover in future episodes. See you next month, and remember, as the summer winds down, to make the most of your Camp Conquer training experience.